Brendan, let's get to a little hockey talk. Um, Gabe Velarde signed. We just played his little pump-up video to Jet fans. He seems to certainly be embracing the opportunity that he's got in Winnipeg. Hey, Jets fans. I'm really happy to get my new deal done. I can't wait for training camp in September and uh, for the season to start in October. I'm really excited. Go Jets, go, baby. Listen, I, I was not surprised at all, other than I thought maybe he would have gotten a few extra $100,000 on this deal. I was totally expecting a two-year deal, considering there's four years of team control. He's a new player coming over. Um, did you see it the way I did, or were you? I was kind of surprised at the amount of people going, "Whoa, they really missed an opportunity for a long-term deal." Not even sure that either side thought that right now was the time to do that. Where are you at on the Volardi? Well, I mean, what's that? Ninety-nine percent of RFAs have signed a two-year deal this off-season. Like, I, I don't know why people were surprised. Like, that, clearly every agent is talking to their player, their client, and saying, look, let's just – let's try to revisit this in two years. The cap will go up by a bit, and, you know, we'll, we'll make a little bit of extra dough at that point. So, uh, it'd be great. It would have been great, in my opinion, to have him locked in for six, seven years. But there has been almost nobody that's done that so far. So, there's very little I think the Jets could have done there. But at the same time, too, you know, like, there is a little bit of maybe – like maybe we should slow play it a touch, right? Like we're talking about a guy that's had some pretty significant back concerns in his in his young career and one good season for sure, but only one season of of solid production so far. So I to, to me when I look at the Velarde deal, yeah, it would have been nice to get a few more years in, but at the same time, you know what if it costs the Jets a bit in 2 years, then you know, that's that's a pretty damn good problem to have <laughs> if they have to pay him, you know, seven or eight million dollars on a long term deal. Right. So I, I just I, I think teams are kind of behind the eight ball this summer when it comes to negotiating with their RFAs. This is just how it's going right now. Pretty much everybody's locked into a two year deal and <laughs> it's going to be a mad off season in two years from now. But I think agents are just realizing that, you know what, there's not too much money to go around at the moment. Let's get this two-year deal underway. We'll have about 100-plus more games under our belt, hopefully, by the time we come around to negotiate next time. And the Jets still have two more years, right? Either two or three, for sure, two more years of, of RFA control at that point. So they still hold a lot of uh, chips and, and, and the cards when it comes to negotiating with Velarde next time around. Yeah, you know, it's a great point. That's a big reason why I think Velarde made so much sense for the Winnipeg Jets to you know, to acquire as part of that deal. Coming off a real sort of breakout season, you know, has the ability to play top six, can play on the wing, can play in the middle, but there's four years of team control. And, you know, it was funny hearing him talk when he met the media the first time. He said his deal last year, the one-year deal he was on, was just sort of like, okay, here's your deal. Thank you very much, and you sign it. Obviously, he had more to stand on this year, and I mean, that was never getting to ARB. Uh, I don't think there was any doubt about that. However, um, you know, from a Jets perspective, as excited as you are about a player like this, you make a great point. There has been injury issues in the past, and you, know, you want to make sure things go well. I'm not sure that you're looking at jumping into a seven, six or a seven-year deal right off the bat. And for Velarde's part... Um, I think it's twofold. First of all, he's getting traded to a new team. He's never even played a game. I mean, this isn't Jonathan Huberto that was at the point where he's going to be getting free agent money. They gave him the best deal that's obviously on the table, and he just signs it because he knows that that's going to be the most money. For Velarde, he gets to come here, obviously play a very big role for this team, and will have every opportunity to be in a situation in two years where... He's one of the go-to guys on this team, and they're interested in signing him long-term, and he's worth a hell of a lot more than the three and a half mil or whatever it was that he got this year. So to me, it makes a lot of sense, and this is just doing business right now in the summer of 2023 for RFAs. Yeah, and I mean, on, on his side, there's a not insignificant chance that he's this team's number one center come training camp, right? Like, depending what happens with Mark Shively. So, I mean, you, you want to talk about negotiating power next time around, you know, potentially yeah. getting 20 minutes a night down the middle for all, all that stuff. I mean, there's the opportunity for him to hit it big for sure. So I, I, I get it from his side of things. You know, honestly, if I had to pick between either Velarde or, or Dylan Sandberg, which one I'd go long term, as, as much as I like Velarde's game, I, I might have picked Dylan Sandberg anyways. Um, but this is just, I think it's just the nature of, of the business right now when it comes to RFAs is just that nobody's signing. I, what is it? I think Caulfield was maybe the only one that, that went 
long term. But other than that, I can't really think of too many off the top of my head this offseason, especially after free agency happened. You know, these guys are just – everybody's playing the waiting game right now. And that, that, there's a lot of UFAs doing that, but there's a lot of RFAs doing that right now. And, you know, to be fair, that's – from a player side of things, that's that's probably the way to go. And it's really the only way you can utilize any leverage that you have going up against, you know, the GM and the team in terms of contract negotiating. You have a little – little power to begin with but trying to stick with a, a, a shorter term deal and then parlaying that into a bigger ticket down the road is is really the only way to go about things caulfield secured the bag and of course pld secured the bag as well but that was part of the uh him going there and now the pressure's all on dubois to uh prove that he was worth a pretty big ransom that the kings gave up to get him there and uh you know that 8.5 million dollar salary that will be more than Andre kopitar is not next year, but in the following two years. And um, I'm fascinated to see how all the, that all plays out. 